Hey guys, today I'm doing a quick review tutorial over Photopea. Go ahead and open up Photopea on your computer and click New Project. What we'll be creating today is an example book cover. Go ahead and title your project book cover and let's change the dimensions. I like to work in inches, so make sure you're in inches. And I'm just going to set it at eight and a half by 11 and I'll leave the DPI at 72. Click Create. Next, we need to import a picture that you want to feature on your book cover. I've already downloaded one, but now's the time to download an image. Once you have it downloaded, click File, Open in Place, and click on the image that you downloaded. I'm creating a sci-fi book cover, so I chose an astronaut. From here, we need to fill this space, all this empty white space, with our picture by stretching our image larger. Now, if you just start stretching, you'll notice that things start warping and getting squished, which is never a good idea. To go back and undo this, a quick keyboard shortcut is Command or Control Z. Another easy way to go back to what you did is to go over to the History panel and click on your latest action. You can go to Open, Play Smart Object, Free Transform. I'm going to keep it on Placing Smart Object. Now I'm going to show you how to correctly stretch your image. To correctly stretch it without it warping, you simply hold, the, hold down the Shift key and stretch from the corners. This allows your image to get larger without it warping. Next, just move it around. You can see those red lines appear to center things and align them to the middle. If you are having trouble finding these move tools here on the side, you simply have to click on this pointer move tool button and make sure that this transform controls is checked. Once you have that, then you can hold shift and stretch your image. Okay, next what we're going to do is add a shape. Now all of these tools over here do different things and each tool you can actually have and reveal all of these hidden tools within that one icon. We'll be working with this shape icon. If you right click it, you can see all of these different shapes that we can add. I'm just going to stick with rectangle. Next, I'm going to stretch the shape all across the page. Now what you'll notice is that the shape is now on top. This is our layers panel here and all of this, all of these different types of Photoshop or photo P editing websites work in layers. Right now our shape is on top with our image in the middle and then our background. You can click this hide and reveal to see what's underneath. For now we're just going to keep this on the top so that we can edit it. Go ahead and click on the fill button and change it to a color of your choice. I'll stick with pink. You can also change the outline by adding a stroke, change the width of it, make the corners rounded, doing a lot of different things. Next, what we're going to do is gradate the shape into the picture so that they blend together. The first thing though I'm going to do is rearrange my layers. You can simply do this by clicking and dragging whichever layer you want to move. Okay, next I'm going to create a gradient over this image so that part of the pink shape is revealed at the base. I'm gonna click on this gradient tool and I'm going to make sure that it is in the black to white. Now if you start clicking, it will say smart object must be rasterized first. We're going to right click and click rasterize and we're also going to add a raster mask. So click on this button right here making sure that you are selected in this layer. You can only work within the layer that you are selected in. Now I'm going to make sure I'm in the gradient tool and I'm going to click and drag and see what happens. You can see how part of my image is being erased so that the color underneath is starting to be revealed. Now I've got a nice area for text. From here, I'm going to click on the text tool and add a title. Go ahead and create a text box that stretches across your book cover and come up with a title. I'm just going to make it say, Trip to the Moon, keeping it simple. From here, you can highlight, change the size by using this dragging tool or simply change the number. And we can center it and now we can change the font. 
if you click on the drop down arrow, you can see all of these different types of fonts that are being shown down here. You can see the preview of what that font looks like. Now, right now, this is a lot of fonts, almost overwhelming, an, an overwhelming amount. I'm going to click on the all button twice so that now I can go in and select a few that might fit the theme or vibe of my book cover. Maybe I'll click on display or monospace, maybe novelty, maybe retro, and just see what comes up. From here, I can scroll through and see which one looks best for my book cover. Now, just to make this go faster, I have found that the font Distant Galaxy looks very sci-fi, so I'm gonna click on that one. And now we can deselect, we can change the color of the font to whatever you want. There we go. Next, we can add effects. So I just highlighted everything, making sure I'm in the text layer, and I'm going to click on this effects button. And these are all of the different effects that will be applied to your text. I want my text to pop up a little bit, so I'm gonna say bevel and emboss. And you can see here how my text started to create this bevel effect. You can change the angle of the bevel. You can change the depth. You can even add other layer styles to your text. Maybe I want an outer glow to make it really pop. Now don't go overboard on the layer styles. Sometimes it will just get overwhelming and just crazy. Play around with those. If I want to make this a little bigger, there are two ways I can do it. I can double click on my text and change the size, or I can simply click on the move tool, hold shift and stretch my text to fit the page a little bit better. Okay, next I'm going to add an author title right here. And I'll just say George McFly, back to the future style. I'm going to change the size to a smaller font because I want the hierarchy to be seen first to the title, Trip to the Moon, second to the author's name. I'm also going to move it around until the red line appears so that I know that it's centered. Now right now you can see that the layer styles are different. This one doesn't have anything applied to it. All I have to do is click on this layer that has the effects and right click and say layer style, copy. I'm going to click on the other one, right click and say layer style, paste. And it will apply all of those layer styles. Now you don't have to keep the font the same. It can be different. Just keep in mind opposites attract. Make sure that it all flows well together. Next thing I want to do is move all of my text down so that it's centered a little bit more in the color. To select both of these, I'm going to hold the shift button so that both are highlighted. And now I'm just using my arrow key to move down my text so that it's a little bit more centered here. From here, you can play around with fonts. Maybe I want to make this a little bit bigger or maybe I want to add a little description down at the bottom. But once you are totally done, all you have to do is say file, save as a PSD. It's very important that you click save as a PSD every single day. PSD stands for Photoshop document, meaning that when you reopen it the next day, it will save all of these layers so that you can move them around and work with it. If you don't save, all of your work for that, that day will be lost. Once you have totally completed your design, and you're ready to send it off or turn it in, you'll save it one more time as a PSD, then say export as JPEG, bump the quality all the way up. I know it looks cropped out, but it will be fine. It's just showing you the pixelation. And then say save. Once you have it saved to your computer, then you can close out PhotoP and move on with your day. Let me know if you have any questions.